And yes, that is R2's head, and we've got Alex here. Oh, R2D3. R2D3, he was in the show for about two seconds. Yep, and what's inside? Inside, he's a giant remote control car. <laughs> <laughs> so he's built as simply as possible for us to take to events. Right. So um, we've just got a, um, I think that's a dimension engineering mm -hmm. robot controller. Yes. Uh, just drives the, the feet in tank drive mode. So right. it's just speed up the left motor, speed up the right motor to turn right. around. And what's that blue thing with the horns? That looks hacked. That looks uh, like a hacked yep, toy. There is a hacked uh, MP3 player slash speaker. <laughs> right. So what we've got here is just an MP3 playing a track. Got it. And that's uh, and that's where the R2 noises come from. That's where the oh R2 yeah, there's the, there's the little MP3 player yeah. down the bottom. Yep. yep. Nice. And it's, it's spaced just far enough for people to think that R2 is actually talking to them. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, Right, Much less work than us. Um, trying to interact with people and yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I do have a Bluetooth receiver in there, so I can yep. actually make sounds from the phone. Oh, so the sounds are coming off the yeah. phone. It, it, you can actually do phone, phone on your phone, but it's just easier if the, the robot does the MP3 stuff. So, um, and all, all this is basically just forward, yep. yes. back, left, right. And head spin. Awesome. And everything else is just as yep. simple as we can make it. Awesome work, Alex. And we have Dion here, and he's got some interesting wearables. Hi, Look folks. At that. It's a Arduino Ether 10 and an OLED display from Freetronics. And it's playing what? It's playing the tank demo sketch. Nice. And, and the belt, the unfortunately. Belt, unfortunately, it doesn't work, but it was meant to say, I love pie. <laughs> oh, perhaps beautiful. I need something more than the batteries to go in it this morning. <laughs> oh, terrific. Ah, oh, well, it's a, it's it's a, a spirit great show that counts. Anyway. Interesting coming. The Maker Fair has been a good show. And I'm here with Mao from Biohack Sydney. Yep. And tell us all about your group. Okay, so we're Australia's first uh, do-it-yourself biology group. We started two years ago. Um, we aim to take molecular biology and biology in general <laughs> out of the lab and into the home. Um, we try and lower the technological and cost barrier to biology. Awesome. And yeah. you've got some great uh, demos here that people can do at home and stuff like that. That's right. Tell so us about them. We've got, um, we've got a few kits set up. Um, yeah. The first kit's a Winogradsky column. So a Winogradsky column is uh, a way to study environmental microbiology without having a lab or an autoclave or petri dishes. Right. So it takes pond scum. Pond scum? <laughs> Which, 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 is, which is hard to get, I'm sure. Yeah, that's it, yeah. It's, um, it's a homogenous mixture of all different types of microbes. And um, when you add some sulfur and some calcium carbonate and some cellulose into the mixture, it creates two intersecting gradients. One, one is high oxygen to low oxygen, and one's high sulfur to low sulfur right. at the top. This causes the bacteria to stratify out into different layers. And... Uh, you can see some different groups of bacteria in there. So you have um, photosynthetic cyanobacteria that are making oxygen at the top. Mm -hmm. You have a microaerophilic zone. You have some yeah. sulfate reducers. You have some green and purple photosynthetic bacteria that aren't producing oxygen. Um, and then you have some methanogens and then some rust-colored bacteria at the bottom that are utilizing low oxygen and high sulfur. So, so you start out with that and they just self-separate. That's right. right. Across a period of between six weeks to three months. Yeah, got it. And then yeah. you leave it in the sunlight and every day it will slightly change according to the different um, chemicals that are in there at the time, depending yep. on what's eating what. And the only input is light. Got it. So, but it does require sunlight otherwise. There's yeah, you no, can grow different no ones that are a bit more input. boring. There's That's no right. energy input to it. Exactly right, it's a self-contained system. Now, uh, it's similar to a terrarium, which is another self-contained system that we've got set up. And um, these are really hackable. So one of the greatest things about them is you can put, if you put a wire in the bottom and a wire in the top, it'll generate a charge from the free yep. electrons. Nice. And the difference. Um, also, there, uh, you can modify the sides to put uh, taps on there. Oh, yeah. So you can pull different types of bacteria out, right. which means yeah, yeah. that if you're interested in studying just the bacteria that exist in this zone here... You can actually cultivate them and pull them out. Exactly right, without having nice. to have a lab set up. So that's the reason I picked this as a good thing to bring along to the Maker Fair. Terrific. And you guys are uh, going to do a crowdfunding campaign soon to get, a, get your right. own lab space. Yeah, so um, there's a few groups around the world that uh, are doing do-it-yourself biology that have successfully launched crowdfunding campaigns to mm -hmm. get a lab space yep. and we're in contact with them at the moment to set up our own campaign yep. to hopefully get something around Sydney CBD mm -hmm. uh, to allow people to come in 
from that don't have a lot of experience or don't have their own labs yep. uh, to come and hack with us in, um, in an environment with hopefully enough security to be able to do things like basic genetic engineering, a little bit of electronics for building our own lab equipment, yep. and um, doing things like beer brewing, bread making, cheese making, yogurt making, which is all biotech things, yeah, of and of course making everything glow. And where can people learn more? <laughs> um, so we have a Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash biohacksy. Thanks, man. Fantastic. Thanks very much. So, and I'm here with Adrian from Robo Dojo. Dojo. Excellent. Love the shirt. Science. Thank you. It works. It does. Science works. Tell us all about this fantastic Nerf gun. Yeah. So um, basically, we were looking at doing a project for the Maker Fair. Yep. Um, came up with this kind of about a couple of weeks ago as a good candidate. Started work on Monday. Uh, on Monday? Yeah, on Monday. Um, CNC cut the, the foam, PVC foam for the top, MDF yeah. for the base. Took the Nerf Vulcan, which is a great little toy. Um, mm -hmm. Extended ammo belt, modified it very slightly just to bypass all the triggers electronically. Yep. Uh, so basically just run that for a MOSFET into an Arduino, straight into the computer, running um, Project Sentry Gun software. So, right. yeah, so some open source software. Oh, it's open source for Yes, it is. So, if right. you do want to build your own, go for it. Awesome. Yeah. And show us what it does. Okay. Uh, might want to take a step back and no. we'll uh, hopefully it, I won't hear people behind. Me? Yeah, I'll shoot you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> shoot. And then I'll put it into auto mode. All right, see, see if we can hit the lens. See if we can hit the lens. Oh, did we get it? I think we got it. <laughs> Yeah. My, my brand new and I'll put it back into auto mode, yeah. so... Alright. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it will target the nearest object, so... Because uh, you do have camera tracking. Yes, we do. Uh, there's a camera built into the base of it oh, as well. right, okay. So that's connected up to the computer through the Project Sentry software, which is running OpenCV, basically. OpenCV to yep. detect, yep. And, and um, yeah, it does a pretty good job overall. Yeah? yeah. Okay, so how, how is OpenCV? It works pretty well? Overall pretty good, yes. Yeah, and from, and I've had limited. Uh, I have had limited experience with it. This is pretty much my first time right. oh, okay. running it in an actual project kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, overall it does work pretty well. Great. But so, um, it was really only because of Robo Dojo that I was able to uh, make this. Yep. Um, you know, the CNC router, things like that, the expertise of uh, Andrew over there. Yep. Kind of thing. Terrific. Um, and you put it all together in less than a week. Yes. Yeah, Fantastic. we managed to pull it off. So. Well done. Yeah. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Not and a problem. And there's your Robo Dojo. Ta-da. There it is. Yep. And so you. you can find us on Facebook if you just all search right. for Robo Dojo. And I'm here with Joe from the Community Robotics Group here in Sydney. I had no idea there was a Community Robotics Group. Tell us all about it. Well, the Community Robotics Group comes from the Greater Western area of Sydney, out at the MacArthur region. And it's made up of six children from six different schools. Uh, we have a team number of 101 for the world's team. It's a prime number. Our local national number is 31. We are a prime number. So united we stand, divided we can't be. We are part of FIRST Robotics, which oh, yeah, originally right. came yeah. out of um, Macquarie University. And you've got some hardware to show us. We have some hardware. This and is Baxter. Baxter. Baxter the robot. Because there's his eyes, his ears, and he swallows the block just there as his little beater goes around to collect it. Very now Baxter nice. is very clever. He doesn't get stuck in corners because yeah. he's not he's not a uh, rectangle. When right. he is compressed, he is he fits into an 18-inch cube. Yep. After he is measured, he can he can grow and become any height oh, he measured. likes. So that's part of the requirements that you have to be under a certain yes. height or something, is it? Originally, when part of the competition is you build a robot to fit a given game plan. And the robot has to fit into an 18-inch cube at ah, the start of the competition. Got it. However, after that cube comes off, it mm -hmm. can grow to any size you like. This particular competition is a competition of moving, picking up blocks, mm -hmm. putting them into a seesaw of baskets, getting it level, assisting your team member to get more blocks into the baskets as well because it's co-opetition. Got it. The end game is to go up a ramp raise your, your bar, hook onto a hook, and then bring your, the body of your robot off the ground Got so it. that you are being suspended from a bar. The last part of the competition is also to do a flag winder, of which we can do very fast, and we work with our team to do it. Now Baxter here loves to play, 
And he is a little bit different from most robots because he has helodromic wheels, which means ah. that they're all at 45 degree angle. Got and it. he also has a compass direction, which means no matter where he is on the field, forward mm. is forward, backwards is backwards, and left is left, and right is right. Yep. So he are, can are rotate himself. Are you allowed to interfere with other robots, electronically or magnetically? Or? Absolutely not. It's and all about gracious professionalism. Oh, gracious and professionalism. And we have to help other robots be better than what oh, they were before they got them. on the floor. Goodness. So we might push them for the push yep. the uh, push the blocks into their direction so they can pick them up and put them in the baskets. Uh -huh. Or our alliance team, if they are a better hanger than us, we might get them to hang and we might do the flag uh -huh. one. So we can all Got help it. each other with our um, point scoring. Or if our alliance partner is a little bit sluggish getting up the ramp, we might give them a little bit of assistance getting up there, like pulling them or pushing them up to hold them there. Got so it. that everybody yep. gets a fair game and has a great opportunity to play. Alright, so tell us about some of the hardware, other hardware that's on here. Okay, we have some, the metal is made out of matrix, we have cable ties, we have pieces on our robot that have been done on 3D printers and compressed polystyrene, a bit like you call it coffee cup but it's still here, made out of 3D printers and, and um, routers. We have extra cable here that gets laser cut, laser cut, and we have Lego. When you build your robot, you can use as much Lego as you like except for Duplo and the EV3. You can use your Matrix kit or your Tetrix kit, depending on what, um, and their electricals. Mm -hmm. And you can also use locally manu manufactured parts, right. for example, 3D printers and, yep. and things like that, and polystyrene. Got it. But if you use, uh, we're using, we're running with Matrix Electronics because we have a Matrix kit. These here, you might see those in your kitchen cupboard because yes. they're called linear slides. Yep, they are. You just take the spring out of them and we use them as lifters. Got it. What else have we used on here? We use lots of cable ties Absolutely. and duct tape is our special friend. <laughs> we like duct tape and nail polish is particularly big with our robot because nail polish has um, a component in it called Loctite. Yes. That, I think that's just probably the, um, the manufacturer's name. but. The Loctite, we apply it to our screws and things after we've tightened them up to make sure that they don't come loose. But they also provide a bit of bling for the robot. And he's round so he doesn't get stuck in corners. And it's an ever-evolving project. Absolutely. <laughs> Every day that he comes out for a bit of a play session, he gets tweaked somehow or other. But this is not our original robot from Nationals. Our original robot from Nationals was a cube made out of mat uh, matrix. And this looks completely different. I think the only original part is our flag winder. But during competition, your robot is constantly changing because you learn from, you don't know what you don't know, and you learn as you evolve through the game, through the season, as to what you need to do to make your robot better than what it was. And that's about it. That's great. Thank you very much, Joe. You're welcome. <laughs> and I'm at Row Buddy with Dammit. Hey, and hey. he's got cool little robots. Tell us all about them. Thanks, Dale. So, um, what we got actually is a, a two things. So we yep. got a software platform as well as a hardware. Oh, okay. Um, yep. Let me just show you quickly. So, you know how people go ra Raspberry Pis and yep. then, you know, they're just collecting dust because, you know, once you got it, because it's cheap and all that. Exactly. It's, there's a bit of a learning curve. Yep. So what we've done is actually because we I do a lot of um, volunteer projects with students and you know teaching robotics. Yep. So that's one of the things that came out like everybody, you know, bought a Raspberry Pi but never really got to work with exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's so what we problem. exactly. So yep. what we thought um, we want to do something that they get excited about the mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi. Yep. And and do something straight out of the box. So what we've done is actually created a app we're currently testing in beta. Yep. So here the app you can actually um But is this a kit? Can you uh, at the moment it's not a kit. Right, so but it's it will actually, be it, it will be at, at some stage. Okay, yeah, great. If there's interest. Um, so what we got is a um, app that can create interfaces. So this one you can just drag and drop create a oh, control okay. interface. Oh okay, a control right? interface, yeah. nice. So so and then um, you can configure your Pi if you want to. Yep. And you can we got also video streaming as well. So you build your control interfaces however you like. So uh, it's not just for robots, it's for no, the Raspberry Pi in general. 
it's just not for Raspberry Pi even. Right. It's uh, for Raspberry Pi, yep. and we got our um, own hardware platform as well. So we got um, hardware pat platform as well yep. uh, that can talk directly to the Android smart devices mm -hmm. and to the app as well. So you could actually be build number of different hardware combinations like Raspberry Pi through I2C to our platform, yep. or Raspberry Pi standalone, or ras um, our board and and the app itself. And then just imagine like. We've got a couple of examples. This one yep. is a RC car, old RC car. We're just bringing it to life again. So we got our board and Raspberry Pi connect together. And you can, you know, in 10 minutes, you can knock up a yeah, uh, yeah. control interface and drive this old, you know, bomb. Nice. And similarly, you can do like a home automation system. So imagine you just get this one and it already got like four motor drivers built in. Yep. Battery charger, battery controller, and uh, audio pi amplifier, and number of IPO, GPIOs, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that, combined with this, you can easily you know build up your own home automation interface, like you know hook up some lights and yep. uh, dimmers exactly. and that sort of yeah. thing. And in 30 minutes, you got your home automation system done. Ah, oh, terrific! So, and is this available yet, or is this um, still So what we've done is actually we've done an Indiegogo campaign some time back. Oh, you have? So, okay, yeah. so you got some funding from that? Some early funding. Yep. And uh, what we're currently at is just um, sending that to our early backers. Yep. And see how the interest grows and, and take it from there, I think. Right, so it was just a software app? Was the Software and hardware, so it's oh, a combination. So, it was a combination. so this, yep. the good thing is like, this could generalize into like a network of networks. Yep. Um, this stuff is actually coming from um, uh, early work that we did at a university here mm -hmm. in Sydney. Um, so we've got like um, a very generic network system that can drive hardware and software. So you can kind of imagine like, you know, combining like mm -hmm. a swarm of robots, for instance. Yep. So 10 robots controlled by one Android app, that sort of thing. So it can grow organically. Got it. And I noticed you've got a GoPro on the front of this. Yeah, we've been, he's, he's been driving uh, right. around and getting some images for us. Ah, right. <laughs> Any um, thought about using OpenCV to uh, capture, like to actually have a webcam on there or uh, so, something like that? Yeah, well, this one actually got a uh, MJPEG streamer already oh, built okay. in. Right. So that you can... Um, and, and this is your hardware? That's our hardware. That time, yep. so. Right. And they can stream MJPEG. MJPEG, yeah. Right. To the app. To the app. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. so you can see where you're going, you can see where the When you're driving, going. Um, it's the same with yep. home automation or, you yep. know, spy cams, that sort of thing, and robots, all sorts of things. Excellent. It's looking good. All right, Thanks, so when, when's the next? Are you going for more funding? Um, another crowdfunding? So we're campaign? looking at, I mean, we're thinking of like an industrial version of this as well. Like, we, yep. we like to think this as a uh, maker's PLC. Mm -hmm. So that's another interesting avenue, and we're currently looking for some investors for that side of things as well. Terrific. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Good luck. See ya. Thank you.